Hello ladies and welcome back. Or if you're new here, welcome, hello. My name is Samantha and it is great to have you. I upload new videos every single Sunday. So if you are not yet subscribed, hit that button down below and join us here on my channel. Today we are going to be discussing mental health, travel tips, and how to choose investment pieces correctly. So if any of those topics sound good to you, keep on watching. So I asked you all to send in questions or topics that you wanted me to discuss for this video. And I received a few responses that we will get into later on. But for the time being, I just wanted to give you all a little update on my life, on what's going on in my mental space, how my 2020 has started and all of that. I have received messages in the past saying that my YouTube channel feels very impersonal and you are right, I understand that entirely because I have wanted to keep a certain distance from my social media postings and my real life. However, I don't want it to be so impersonal that you feel as if I'm not a real person. So today we will hopefully bridge that gap and I hope you enjoy something that's a little bit more personal. So as I said, we are now in 2020, we all know that. And um, frankly, I'm doing fine. I did not expect to be this chill because the tarot readers I follow who actually care about planetary aspects and do their research had made it quite clear that 2020 was going to be a trip. And you know, I could still see that happening. I could still see things amping up quite quickly. However, for the time being, things are rather chill. But with that being said, me as a person um, is obviously going through like a transformational process, which is like fun in some senses, but like traumatizing in others. As you know, like self-betterment can be. It's a nice mix of traumatizing and enlightening. So that's what it is and you know what as much as I may struggle with it to a certain degree I do realize that is what's necessary so I am trying to remain positive and optimistic and you know just like focus on taking the lesson in everything and really learning from my past mistakes so ultimately I just want to really focus on holding myself and others accountable when behaviors, actions, or words are spoken or done that just are not acceptable to me because I've made the mistake of allowing a certain degree of disrespect in many avenues of my life. For 2020, I want that to be a thing of the past. Like we are going into a new year and a new decade. Like, yeah, you can set your new year's resolution and that's fine and good, but like, how about a new decade resolution? My new decade resolution is to take less shit. And frankly, I think that's an amazing resolution. I am working on that daily. I am working on self-awareness daily. I've been going to therapy for months. I've medicated my anxiety. I've been working on understanding myself, my traumas, my shortcomings and like all of that really not fun but totally necessary stuff and i'm super proud of myself for doing that because it is as i said not fun it's really difficult to look inwardly and realize your shortcomings or things that have happened to you in the past that have impacted you in a way that you've never really processed properly so kudos to anybody who is doing that right now because from what I've seen of my community and other communities, it does seem like we are all going through the same like transformational process right now, which is amazing. I'm so proud of all of you. I think everybody, if they can afford it, should be in therapy. If you can't afford to be in therapy, you should consider group therapy or online counseling or online support groups, or even just like following people on Instagram who share mental health tips, tricks, and like information. I will link some of my favorites down below. And if you have any favorites, I would love it if you could also put those in the comments so that other people can see them and make use of them. 
so yeah therapy is therapy it's going as good as reliving trauma possibly can be everybody should do their best in 2020 to seek out some sort of professional mental health assistance i think that we collectively need to put a lot of importance on our mental health i think that the world has more than enough angry angsty adults and we certainly do not want to add to that so that is my thoughts on mental health and therapy that absolutely nobody requested however it's what you got and i hope it was helpful like i said if you guys have any sort of resources that have really made an impact on you please put those in the comments for a slight change of topic i have also received quite a few messages saying that people want to know about my relationship and to that i say as of today january 23rd 2020 at 12 47 pm i have no intent of discussing my relationship at the length that people seem to hope for so if you are following me in hopes that you will find out some secret about my relationship you can go ahead and unfollow me or unsubscribe it's fine i understand people are curious and that's what happens when you put your life on the internet however if you're just here to see my partner or find out what he does or who he is you're going to be sadly disappointed because i don't think that is something i will ever discuss so i do understand that you all want me to be personal and i will do my best to be personal however there are some lines that i have drawn and they will not be crossed and it's really not that deep it's just a certain amount of privacy should be allotted to everybody regardless of whether or not they're active on social media once i get my eyeshadow done i'm going to start reading the questions and topics that everybody sent in but again, I just wanted to give you all a little bit of an update on my life and talk a little bit about the things that I find important, such as privacy and therapy. So I hope that you enjoy the style of this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up to counteract the one person who routinely gives me a thumbs down on every single video within like 10 minutes of posting it's kind of funny it's more entertaining than anything it's just like you are really committed to your dislike of my video so my washi tape is off now i've put a glitter on my eyelid now i'm going to do my eyeliner i will just use some of my setting spray this is from tarte it is the rainforest of the sea and I'm going to mix a little bit of Urban Decay setting spray in there as well. And then I'm going to use this to moisten a dark shadow. And I will use that as my liner. So I am back and I've got eyeliner. So this means we are finally going to be diving into the questions I was sent. One of my followers on Instagram asked, What's your favorite part of getting ready for a special occasion or just every day? Honestly, my favorite 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 part of getting ready is just doing my skincare i just love how my skin feels after applying my serums and my creams and my sunscreen it just feels so amazing and so glowy so that is my favorite part so another question i received was do you have any tips on using a tripod to take your own pics i.e angles etc yes get yourself a Bluetooth remote. And when you get your Bluetooth remote, don't just use it as a click, there's my photo, done. You should set your phone to a three to five second delay so that when you click your remote, you have your three to five seconds in order to pose and hide the remote. So what I like to do personally is if I'm taking a photo, with a tripod or even without a tripod and I just have somebody else taking my photos for me I will take the remote and put it in my bra and then when I want my photo taken I just click and then I pose so it's not me awkwardly holding the remote it's gone it's out of sight out of mind 
As for angles, I would say that the positive side to having a tripod is the fact that you can play around with angles. Like everybody has different angles. Everybody has different angles in different lighting. So ultimately I can't give you instructions on which angles would be best for you. However, generally straight on or sometimes from a higher angle, angled down is flattering. However, again, that is very subjective and does not necessarily work for every single person. If you have the option of getting like a really tall tripod, like the tripod I'm using for my camera right now is only this big, I would suggest getting one of the larger tripods that collapses down to this size, but can also be extended to be like five feet. But I would definitely say that getting yourself a Bluetooth remote is the biggest game changer when it comes to taking your own photos. So I will have the one I use as well as the tripod I use linked in the description if you want to check those out. They're amazing. That's how I get the majority of my photos on Instagram because my boyfriend does not understand the concept of angles. So those come in handy very frequently. Before I start this eyebrow, let's move on to the next question. Another one of my Instagram followers who is an absolute angel wants to know what music or podcasts I'm listening to at the moment. So the podcast answer is a short answer, so we will start with that. So the only podcast I have ever listened to and probably will ever listen to because I'm frankly not that big on podcasts is Soberish by Jessa Reed. I have been listening to her podcast for probably almost a year at this point and I love it. I found her through one of my favorite, actually like my favorite tarot reader, Water Baby Tarot. She was on one of Jessa's episodes and because I loved her, I was like, oh, let me check out this episode of this podcast. And at first, frankly, I was like, Jessa is very annoying. Something about her just like did not sit right with me. But then like next thing I knew, I was like obsessed with her in like a healthy way. So I love everything she does. If you happen to like discussions on multi-dimensional beings and life beyond the 3D, I would highly suggest you check out her podcast and her Instagram to just get a feel of things. I love it so much, but I do understand that her demographic and my demographic are very different. Moving on, I was also asked about what music I'm listening to. As for like the music that's like recently released and currently trending, I would say I've been listening to Cash Doll's new album. I have been listening to Tory Lane's new album reluctantly because he as a person has said some things that personally make me uneasy. I also have been listening to Old Party Next Door because he's just not releasing anything else. Apparently he dropped two songs and then was like, that's it, that's all. Get used to it. Um, so I've been listening to Old Party Next Door, Old The Weekend. We're talking like um, House of Balloons and Kissland. No Drake, if I can absolutely help it, unless it comes on shuffle and it's a song that's featuring either Travis Scott or The Weeknd. I'm not listening to Drake because Drake is giving major, major creep vibes, as we all know. And frankly, I don't want to support him knowing that it could totally be another R. Kelly situation. Like it's difficult. And I think that this is something that our generation is really going to grapple with because for a lot of people, Drake is our R. Kelly. Like he's really creepy. His behavior is borderline pedophilic and he makes good music. So now we are having to take the suggestions we made to the older generations who continue to listen to R. Kelly despite the allegations that came out against him and apply those to our own selves because if you are going to disparage R. Kelly, which you absolutely should, 
then you should also see the major, major red flags that Drake is exhibiting when it comes to young girls and grooming. But to transition from the Drake talk, I've been listening to Kalila. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's so magical and I love all of her music and the remixes of her music. They're just so good. They're so, so good. And then I'm also just listening to a lot of music that like I used to listen to, but I just didn't transfer over when I got my new phone. So I've been going through and just like re-downloading stuff from Apple Music. What I have currently downloaded, which is like hardly anything because I've just started doing this, is so much fun from Young Thug, Over It from Summer Walker, Queen by Nicki Minaj, Late Night by Jeremiah, Invasion of Privacy, Cardi B, Magdalene from FKA Twigs, Blood from Rye, East Atlanta Santa from Gucci Man, Gucci Mane, I'm white so I'm gonna say man, Hot Pink from Doja Cat, The Emancipation of Mimi from the one and only Mariah Carey, and then I have one album from a band that I've been obsessed with for years, and the band is called Yay Sayer. The album is called Fragrant World. And I love them so much because the first time I heard them, I was driving through the Alberta mountains in Banff with my best friends and my father. And they came on Sirius Radio. And I'm like, oh, this is like such a vibe. Like that's really the best way of describing their music. It's just such a vibe. So I have that album on my phone and I would highly suggest it. I will link a couple of my favorite songs of theirs down below just in case you want to check them out. So the next suggestion from Instagram is I would love to hear you talk about making moves in silence and keeping the next situation close to the best. This is something I've gone back and forth with because I have two different opinions on it and it's very difficult combining the two. For a long time, I was under the impression that absolutely moves should be made in silence because the evil eye is really real and it is. I've got an evil eye on my ring for that very reason. However, I think my focus on that has more so shifted away from the evil eye and more into the fact that like, Psychologically, when you put the pressure of announcing all of your plans and all of your moves on a public platform or on social media or to your family preemptively, it like puts pressure on you. And I believe studies have shown that it makes it less likely for you to actually accomplish the goal that you set for yourself. So knowing that, I think that there should absolutely be a happy medium between keeping every single thing to yourself and sharing your successes or sharing your plans for the future. However, knowing the fact that being too open with your information can lead you to not actually execute your plans is a cautionary tale in don't tell all of your business or be careful who you tell your business to. Because I know for a fact that when I was starting my YouTube channel, I had said for probably a year, if not almost two years before I made it, I'm like, okay guys, I'm making a YouTube channel and everyone got so hyped and they were so ready to support me and they were like, okay, so like, where's the link? Where's the link? <laughs> where's the link? I absolutely know that the pressure I put on myself inadvertently by sharing my plan before it was fully ready to be actualized is one of the reasons it took so long for me to actually get on YouTube. Granted, that's not the only reason, but I do know that I added undue stress and pressure to myself by preemptively announcing my move and allowing other people to be like, oh, I'm so excited for you. Like the, the reception was fully positive. It's not that people were trying to talk me out of it or tell me my idea was bad. I think the problem becomes that when people are supporting you, you don't want to let them down. So you want to make something that'll absolutely blow them out of the water, which when you're starting something new is like literally impossible. Like be prepared to fail a million times before you get to the point that you envisioned yourself actually starting at. We like to have lofty dreams when we start things. And I do think that sharing those dreams with others can backfire because 
they will in turn also have lofty expectations for whatever you're doing. So share what you feel comfortable sharing, but don't overdo it. And again, be careful with who you are sharing your information with. If there are people who you think will be bitter or judgmental or simply negative when they receive news of whatever you're doing, then there's no reason for them to receive that information from you. Like some people deserve to be kept in the dark and that's perfectly fine. And even if everybody around you is super supportive and amazing, there's still nothing wrong with keeping details to yourself. I think that is one of the best ways to ensure your success because when you have everything planned out and you are free of the expectations of others, you will actually be able to create in a much more freeing way. And ultimately, when you create in a freeing environment, that is how you create the best. So now I've essentially reached the point in life where I have no problem mentioning the things I plan on doing going forward. However, I will not mention it until that plan is already in place. So I think that there's nothing wrong with keeping things to yourself, keeping your plans close to your vest, as you say. I think that that is a very good way to go about your life. But you also should not be afraid of sharing the good things. So just find yourself a happy medium. It will likely require practice like everything in life, but it's worth it. Next up, I have received a question about travel inspo and info. That's a very vague question, so I don't know exactly what you want from me in terms of info or inspo, but I'm just going to talk about my favorite place in the world, which is Phuket or Phuket. I frankly don't know how to pronounce it and I probably should learn to considering, as I said, it is my favorite place in the world but it is in Thailand and it is so beautiful. The villas there are to die for. They're so private. The food is phenomenal. They make the world's best curry that can only be found there. It is this crab curry that I ate nearly every single day I was there, every time I've gone. And I've gone to Phuket probably about four times. So I've eaten a lot of that curry. Hands down, my favorite place in the whole world. And if you're looking to travel to the tropics, definitely the destination I would suggest for you. It is my definition of heaven on earth. And frankly, my plan is to one day move there because for those of you who don't know, I live in Canada. And I think currently outside my window, it is approximately negative 30 degrees. And that's the average for this time of year. And that just doesn't work for me. So I would love to move to Thailand. And if I do, trust me, I'll be taking you all along with me because I think that'd be so fun. Like, oh my God, I'm moving to Thailand. That would be an amazing vlog, perhaps one day. And again, I'm not totally sure what you were looking for when you asked for travel inspo or info. So I'm just going to address like things you should always bring with you on a plane, especially if you're flying long haul, but frankly, I think they're suitable for any type of plane ride. Deodorant, chapstick, facial mist, hand sanitizer, hand wipes, comfortable shoes, slippers if you can, like cute slippers like the Fenty Rihanna slippers, those are adorable. A blanket, an eye cover, water bottles, a notebook, pens. These are all things that you should bring with you when you're going on a plane. Of course, the first few I mentioned are the most important ones because they are the ones that will keep you looking, feeling, and smelling your best. So I think that those should take priority over a journal if you are short on space. However, bringing a journal is also very valuable because we all know that airlines don't exactly have the best movies available on their TV systems. So like you might as well bring your own entertainment. And by entertainment, I mean journal so you can self-reflect because going back to the beginning of this video, self-reflection is the mood for 2020. So someone on Tumblr asked how to decide which pieces to invest in 
for investment purposes. I personally read investment pieces as pieces that you will sell eventually in order to make a profit. So in my eyes, I would see the only things worth investing in are precious metals, gold, silver, palladium, precious stones like diamonds, rubies, emeralds, you know, anything that sparkles, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. And finally, handbags. Of course, you all know about that, like Birkins and Kelly's and the Chanel bags that are the classics. They do hold their value very well. So if you're going to invest in anything for resale purposes, I would absolutely suggest, as I said, precious stones, precious metals, and handbags. Now, don't make the mistake of buying the super, super trendy pieces from brands like Chanel in hopes that that will be an investment piece because trends fade very, very quickly. And that means that chances are, unless you have a very quick turnaround time on selling that product, you will make no money and you may even lose money. So if possible, stick to the classic designs and neutral colors. Those will be the best on the retail market. And if by chance you are offered some ultra rare Birkin or Kelly from Hermes, I would say that that's a good option as well. Again, it can be hit or miss if it's a very bold color. However, any rare bag from Hermes is generally safe when it comes to the resale market. So in my eyes, those are really the only things you should focus on in terms of investment pieces. I hope that answered your question. You did also want to know about finding your colors. That's difficult because even a color like red has so many undertones that are possibly available to it. So while some reds may look good on you, other reds may not. Some oranges may flatter you and other oranges may make you look like you are sick. So ultimately it depends on your skin tone, what undertones you have for your skin, as well as your hair color and your eye color. You just need to either learn color theory or experiment. So I love that I went into this with the idea of doing a different makeup look. However, the only thing I did at all different is use washi tape on my eyeshadow to make it a bit sharper than normal. It still looks good, so I suppose that's what matters. Let's ignore this huge blemish I have going on right now. My skin has been freaking out. Believe it or not, when you travel every other week, your skin usually does not love that. And given how polluted and just ugh, the air in New York is, my skin is really not happy whenever I go there. It takes a good week for it to clear up after I'm back in Canada. And then like, by the time it clears up, I'm headed back to New York. So then it's just a vicious cycle of breakouts, which is so fun. I love it so much. Thank you to everybody who sent in questions. It was so fun answering them and I really enjoyed doing a more casual get ready with me. I hope you did also enjoy it. So if you did, please leave me a like. You can leave a comment down below about the video or therapy resources as I had said earlier. Aside from that though, I would like to know what other types of content you would like to see from me. So please leave that in the comments down below. I'm going to put on my wig and we're going to give this look a final review. So my wig is on and the last thing to do is to choose a lip color. I'm going to be using a little bit of Dior's Lip Glow Lip Balm just to hydrate my lips before I choose my color. I recently lost my very favorite Charlotte Tilbury lipstick, so I'm kind of torn on what I should wear today. However, I'm thinking I'm going to go with this one. This is Bahama Beige by Milani. I think that was a good color choice. I love this shade. It works so perfectly with the eyeshadow. And overall, I love the look. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one.